so what, starting derivatives definition what, what are your midterms <laughs> so we're gonna focus on real value functions it's okay no one's gonna watch my like no one's gonna watch my i'm life. so sorry to you yeah to you. it's okay no one cares so f is real value functions uh, and close interval well compact basically compact for any x in it we define the co quotient we define the quotient like this we define the quotient like this and then we define the limit of this function as t approaches to x well if this limit exists then we say that oh f is the deri is derivative exists at point x or is differentiable at x or something like that yeah yeah so yeah simple now it's the theorem so differentiability implies continuity proof the proof is really simple so what we want to show is that this is equal to this limit of this minus f b is equal to zero right so if the limit of fx minus fp equals to zero with the fact that with this with the fact that it's continuity it's continuous then we have f of x minus fp plus fp this whole thing is going to be equal to zero plus fp equals to fp right well since so we have f of x minus fp is equal to fx minus f of p divided by x minus p times x minus p we're able to do this because x is not equal to p, so x minus p is not zero. And then by the product rule, right? Product rule of functions, we have we have this is equal to the derivative at p times zero equals to zero. So if this is limited zero, right? Then this should be fp right because like this function is about x x approaches p does affect point p right so if this is zero then the limit of this plus this is zero plus this which is fp well this is limit of f of x which like basically this equivalent all right we're done next <laughs> the sum rule and product rule and quotient rule of derivatives well, they're boring as fuck. But for completion, I'll prove them all. So basically, f plus g x minus f plus g f plus t g t minus f plus g f x over t minus x. <laughs> right, and take your limit. This becomes f t minus f x t minus x plus g of t minus g of x t minus x right dude take your limit bro f x plus g x all right product rule <sighs> the product rule actually i'll skip this part because i'm tired of this and we're gonna prove the chain rule this one is interesting so we're going to prove the chain rule. Usually in class, your teachers will tell you how to apply it, but now we're going to prove it for you guys. So, if we let y is equal to f of x, right? So we let y equal to fx, and we know that f and g, f is uh, differentiable, which means that derivative exists, well, which means that the quotient x minus t 
is equal to the derivative f x plus some error, while this error vanishes as t approaches to x, right? <laughs> so we have f of x, f of t minus f of x is equal to t minus x of basic, like, elementary algebra. You just multiply over, like, to that side. And then, again, g of s, because g is also differentiable. g is differentiable at the point f of x. Well, f is differentiable at x. <coughs> well, this is equal to x minus y of g prime y. y is equal to fx, right? g prime y plus v of s. The v is also the error which vanishes as the input approaches to y, which is fx. Right. So we have t approaches to x, u of t is, so the function, the error function is u of t. So limit as t approaches to x, u of t, not the school, but zero and the input s approaches to y, v of s is equal to zero, right? Since we're differentiable, now we let s equals to f of t, where t is in the interval, t is in the interval, right? So we have, so we have h of t, h of t minus h of x, is equal to g of f of t minus g of f of x. Well, if you you do the substitution, right? So basically, you this one, right? Like this one. So you have this is equal to f of t minus f of x. This times g derivative f. At, I don't know, g derivative at f of x plus v s, v of s, right, well, okay, this is equal to, again, for this f t minus f of x, we do this again, so which gives that t minus x times f derivative at x plus u of t, not the school, and g derivative at y plus v of s, basically copy paste. <laughs> and now, where you have this equal to this, and then we divide this down to this, which gives that h of t minus h of x, t minus x equals to g derivative f of x plus v of s of x plus u of t. <laughs> okay, so now is, here's crucial. So we have that, okay, the fact that this approaches to f of x, then we have v of the input is equal to zero, right? And also we have t approaches to x, f of t. This thing minus fx is zero, right? Because f is continuous. Because f is differentiable, then it's continuous, which we proved five minutes ago, and now that means that for any epsilon greater than zero, <laughs> then there exists delta greater than zero, such that when the input are delta close to each other, but not equal to each other, right? This is a translation of this one. This one implies that V of F of T, it is Less than epsilon. Well, for this neat, uh, for this uh, delta, again, 
is a nita greater than zero such that when t and x are nita close to each other not equal gives f of t minus f of x less than the epsilon no less than the delta well the delta right because for this delta there is a negative because this is true right well, okay now which means that is <laughs> zero epsilon green zero this is nita so which one is this well this this is basically this this implies this which is this <laughs> so that means that okay this this basically means that t approaches to x v of f of t is zero <laughs> right <laughs> okay so now for this expression copy paste here okay now we let t approaches to x t approaches to x right <laughs> Right, this is basically V of F of T, right? <laughs> T over X, this vanishes, this, U of T is zero, U of T is nothing, I hate U of T, no, I love U of T, but U of T is equal to zero, right? Yeah, because we stated like here, u of t is zero. It approaches zero, so so the derivative of h at x is equal to g f of x times f of x. And we're done. The chain rule is proven. Next. So we define the local maximum. Well, we need we need the local maximum to prove the mean value theorem. So basically, the local maximum is that at the point p, which means that there exists a neighborhood such that all the functions output are less than the value that is output at this point. Right. So you have p is an x. If p is local maximum, then there exists a neighborhood such that all the inputs, all the outputs, are less than input at the point p, right, for all q in this delta neighborhood. Well, minimum is defined likewise, and this theorem is going to be useful. All right. What's the name? Is it Rose theorem or extreme value theorem or whatever? But anyways, <laughs> well, to prove it, if f f has local maximum, and well, this is intuitive, right? Because if you have a curve, at ha at its maximum point, its derivative must be zero. Intuitively, it is true, right? Is <laughs> it, it is zero, but how should we prove it? Well, now we follow by the definition, right? So we choose, we choose a delta such that it's in the interval a b. Now, for t in this neighborhood, right? For t in this neighborhood, we have f of t minus f of x t minus x <laughs> well since uh, x is the maximum right so this thing this thing is greater no less than equal to zero right and t is less than <laughs> t is less than x so t minus x is less than zero and two like so this thing should be greater than equal to zero Right. (laughs) 
well, this means that f of its left-hand limit is greater than or equal to zero. Well, since the derivative exists, which means that the left and right hand are equal, which is equal to the derivative. <laughs> Again, now consider this neighborhood, right? Then you have f t minus f of x, t minus x. Again, x is maximum, so this is less than or equal to zero, but this is greater than zero because t is greater than x, and the quotient should be less than or equal to zero. And again, this plus less than or equal to zero. So we have the derivative is less than or equal to zero and greater than or equal to zero. So the only case is that the derivative is zero. Next, next is the general mean value theorem. Well, the mean value theorem is basically when gx is equal to x. We got the, the standard mean value theorem in calc. But we're going to prove the generalized version. So, proof. You let, <coughs> you let h of t equals to this expression. You guys can talk, it's okay. It's okay, you guys can just talk like loud. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Thanks for talking quiet, but it's okay. Just pretend you're in my class, okay? Yes, Professor. Yeah. So now we have that F and G are continuous. Then h is continuous right because h is a like a I don't know, linear combination of continuous functions which is continuous so h is continuous on the interval on a compact set or whatever and also oh and also differentiable right differentiable would be Continuous on the closing interval and differentiable on the open interval, right? So now we have h of a is equal to f b g a minus f a g b equals to h of b. Now, oh my god, we have h a equal to h b. Well, if h is constant. We're good, right? Right, because if h, the derivative of h is zero, which means that if the derivative of h, the, the derivative of h is equal to this, this, right? If this is equal to zero, that means that this is equal to this, which is which proves the mean value theorem, right? So if it's constant, then we're good. Now. If it's not, if it's not, then if h of t greater than h of a for some t and a b, it's not a constant. So we we need this to be true, right? Well, let x be in a b such that h attains the maximum. This is possible because h is continuous, and <clears throat> um, h is continuous on a compact set. Then this image is compact, which is closed and bounded, since we're talking about real numbers, which means that it can attain its maximum and minimum. So, at at a point, exists x such as in it, right? x such that it contains attains its maximum now if it attains its maximum then we know that the derivative of h at x is zero by the extreme value theorem previous previous theorem 
right? Because, because we show that, oh, if it's maximum or it's minimum, it's there it should be zero, we proved it. And now we applied this, right? Which gives the general mean value theorem. Now, when g of x is equal to x, then we have the mean value theorem, which is f of b minus s of a, f b minus a equal to f prime x, for sin x. And we're done. Next, I think this is the last one, yeah. So differentiable. If its derivative is not negative on the entire interval, then it's increasing. Well, intuitively, this is true, right? Like, yeah, if its derivative is like positive. And similar for negative, but if we want to prove it, well, for any two points, right? For any two points, we apply the mean value theorem. Apply mean value theorem. Then we have f of x2 minus f of x1 equals to x2 minus x1 times f prime x. Some, some x between x1 and x2, right? So now we know that we know that this is, of course, greater than equal to zero. And the f prime is greater than equal to zero by assumption, right? So their difference is greater than zero. Their difference is greater than zero, which means that f2 is greater than equal to f1, which means that it's monotonically increasing. And part b, part c is similar. Yeah, we're done.